Seventh grade, unit seven, lesson nine. Drawing triangles, part one. Illustrative mathematics. Practice problems. Problem number one. Use a protractor to try to draw each triangle. Which of these triangles is impossible to draw? A. A triangle where one angle measures 20 degrees and another angle measures 45 degrees. Let's use this protractor to draw the first angle that measures 20 degrees. And now let's draw the next angle that measures 45 degrees. Next, we can slide this angle over and connect them to form the triangle that has one angle that measures 20 degrees and the other angle that measures 45 degrees. B. A triangle where one angle measures 120 degrees and the other angle measures 50 degrees. This angle is 120 degrees and this angle is 50 degrees. Now we can slide them over and see if we can fit them together to form a triangle. The green lines represent where these two lines would eventually meet to form a triangle. C. A triangle where one angle measures 90 degrees and another angle measures 100 degrees. Here's the 90 degree angle and here's the 100 degree angle. You can see that these angles will never meet, so they won't form a triangle. The sum of two of the angles has to be less than 180 degrees, so this won't form a triangle. Problem number two. A triangle has an angle measuring 90 degrees, an angle measuring 20 degrees, and a side that is six units long. The six unit side is in between the 90 degree and 20 degree angles. A. Sketch this triangle and label your sketch with the given measures. Here's the 90 degree angle, and here's the 20 degree angle, and this horizontal line at the bottom is the 6 unit side length between the 90 degree angle and the 20 degree angle. B. How many unique triangles can you draw like this? You can draw only one unique triangle with these exact measures as long as the six unit side length is between the 90 degree angle and the 20 degree angle. Problem number three from seventh grade unit five, lesson 13. A, find a value for x that makes negative x less than two x. Let's start with zero. When x is zero, negative x is zero and two x is zero. Let's plug in one. When x is one, Negative x is negative 1, and 2x is 2. Negative 1 is less than 2. So when x is 1, negative x is less than 2x. B. Find a value for x that makes negative x greater than 2x. Let's try negative 1. So when x is negative 1, negative x is the opposite of negative 1 and 2x is 2 times negative 1. When x is negative 1, then negative x is greater than 2x, because the value for negative x would be 1, and the value for 2x would be negative 2, and 1 is greater than negative 2. Problem number 4 from 7th grade, Unit 5, Lesson 3. One of the particles in atoms is called an electron. It has a charge of negative 1. Another particle in atoms is a proton. It has a charge of positive 1. The overall charge of an atom is the sum of the charge of the electrons and the protons. Here is a list of common elements. Find the overall charge for the rest of the atoms on the list. Look at carbon. Six negatives cancels out six positives, so the overall charge is zero. Look underneath it at aluminum. Ten negatives cancel out ten positives, leaving three positives, so the overall charge is three. Next, look at phosphide. There's more negatives than there are positives, so 15 positives will cancel out 15 of the negatives, and there'll be three negatives left over. So the overall charge for phosphide is negative three. Look at iodide. There's 54 negatives and 53 positives. So there's one more negative. So the overall charge for iodide is negative one. Let's look at the last one, tin. There's 50 negatives and 50 positives. 
that's a zero balance, so the overall charge is zero. Problem number five. From seventh grade unit four, lesson three. A factory produces three bottles of sparkling water for every seven bottles of plain water. If those are the only two products they produce, what percentage of their production is sparkling water? What percentage is plain water? The information tells us for every three bottles of sparkling water, there are seven bottles of plain water. That's a total of 10 bottles. 3 out of 10 is equivalent to 30 out of 100, which is 30%. So 30% of their production is sparkling water, and 70% of their production is plain water. 